and Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends. This is your host to the Inner Sanctum. Welcome through the squeaking door. Well, I hope you've spent a nice, quiet week building up your nervous system. You're going to need plenty of red corpuscles to digest tonight's gory little dish. Hmm? What's that? Oh, you'd like to have a recipe. To a small quantity of apprehension, add a pinch of dismay and cook on a slow fire. Adding dread and panic in appropriate quantity. Then throw in a dose of terror and a whiff of horror. And make it boil, brother. Make it boil. Hmm. Mr. Host, not a very appetizing dish. Let me give you my recipe. All right, Mary. Well, take equal parts of warmth, good cheer, and human comfort. Spice with a brisk flavor, and you have Lipton tea. Yes, and serve it only to people who know how to enjoy life. For Lipton's famous brisk flavor makes this tea a grand welcome drink. You see, brisk means that Lipton's tastes tangy and spirited, never flat or insipid. So, friends, I wish you'd try Lipton's, even if you're not a regular tea drinker. That brisk flavor is something very special. It's the reason why you'll like Lipton's. Well, now, here's a personal question. How would you like to go on a honeymoon? Hmm? Well, you're going on one whether you like it or not. Because tonight's story is called Till Death Do Us Part. It's an original radio play by Emil Tepperman. And our stars tonight are Anne Shepard and Larry Haynes. Just look at them. Joe and Nancy Page. Married hardly five hours. And parked at the side of the road by the bank of the old mill stream and whispering sweet nothings to each other, living in a fool's paradise. Oh, gee, Nancy, it's wonderful to be married to you. Oh, <laughs> Gosh, if the other clerks at Scott's department store could see us now. I don't want anybody to see us. I just want to be alone with you, Joe, for the rest of my life. Gosh, baby, I hope you don't mind spending a honeymoon in a tourist cabin instead of a swanky hotel. No, I love it this way. The stream rushing past, the moonlight shining on the bridge, and the woods all around. Joe, hmm? look, there's another car. They're parking on the bridge. Uh-huh. Well, he's turning his headlights out, too. <laughs> they think they've got privacy. Because <laughs> they can't see us parked here. Joe, look. That couple is getting out of the car. Yeah. For a walk on the bridge, I guess. Hmm? wonder if this is their wedding night, too. Oh, that's a gorgeous couple. Joe. What? A couple. They're acting very strange. They're having an argument. Joe. Look, he just took... Look what he just took out of his pocket. Holy mackerel. A gun. He's pointing the gun at her. <laughs> Joe. He shot her. In the face. Holy mackerel. No, it can't be. It must be a gag of some kind. But you saw the flashes when he fired the gun. And... See how still she lies. Her body crumbled at his feet. Yeah. He's picking her up. I bet he's going to throw her in the... Don't, 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 don't. Let's see, you push my hand down and a horny sees us. He's coming across the bridge. Heading for us. What? He knows we witnessed the murder. He's got to kill us, too. Quick, start the car. Stay here before I can turn the car around. Then what do we do? Oh, we'll duck into the woods. Come on. Quick. Let's run. My high heels. I can't run you fast. Can't Here's for these bushes. Get behind this tree. Run, Nancy. Yes. 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 Yes.
can't go much farther. We can't stop. He's close behind us. Is he gaining on us? No. Nobody's still after us. Oh, let's stop, Ray. No, no, not yet. I saw headlights up ahead. Maybe there's a road. We can only make it. Sean, it's true. I can't go anymore. Nancy, look. Through the trees. The road. Come on, one last sprint. Here's the road. Let's stop. I don't... never thought we'd make it. Is he still after us? Can we through the woods? I don't know. We'll stop the first car that comes along. Oh, oh now take it easy, baby. I was just thinking of that poor girl lying dead on the bridge. Our wedding night, too. Here comes the car. I'll stop it. He went right by. Joe. What? I, I I think I hear something behind us. In the woods. Oh, it's only the wind and the trees. Suppose he should suddenly stop. Step out of these woods with his gun. Maybe maybe he gave up. Maybe maybe he went back to take take care of that body. A car is there. With our marriage license in the glove compartment and the receipt Mrs. Swenson gave us for the cabin. Yeah. He'll know all about us. Who we are, where to find us. And we don't know a thing about him except his face. The face of a murderer. Come on, Nancy. I think we've got to start walking. We've got to get to the cabin and phone the police. How much further, Jill? I'd like to lie down and sleep right here on the road. Find way to spend a wedding night. Darling, look. Hmm? We're there. Swenson's cabin. Uh Uh-huh. See, they're all dark. Everybody's asleep. We'll wake up Mrs. Swenson. Use her phone. Joe! What's the matter? Look, in front of our cabin. What? Hey. That's our car. The murderer must have come here by another road to wait for us. I don't see anybody around. Maybe he's in the car. Wait here, I'll go and see. No, no, Joe, Joe, you're kidding me. No, don't worry. We both saw his face. He's got to kill us both. Don't you see, baby, if I go over there alone, he won't choke till he knows where you are. But, Joe, you... take it easy, will you? You stay back here in the shadows. It'll be all right. It's okay, Nancy. The car's empty. Baby, he's hiding and we're close by. No, no, we must have skipped out. Why did he bring our car back? Well, he wanted to get away from the bridge. Don't you see, he must have dumped that girl's body in the river and then he took our car away. No trace. Joe, I'm scared. Maybe he's hiding inside the cabin waiting for us. No, be a sad. One shot would wake up all the people in the other cabins and Mrs. Swenson, too. You know, he'd never get away with it. Come on, we're going in our cabin. Get cleaned up and we'll use the phone. Switch is right here. There's nobody hiding. Holy mackerel. What? What is it? Oh. Over there. On on the bed. What? The girl's body. With her face shot away. Just like we saw on the bridge. Imagine coming back to your cabin on your wedding night and finding a corpse on your bed. A beautiful corpse who'd had her face lifted without going to a beauty parlor. (laughs) Don't worry, before the night's over, the murderer may have his face lifted too by a rope around his neck. (laughs) Oh, I'm terribly sorry for those two young people. Oh, Mary, you're always feeling sorry for our characters. Why don't you sing a different tune? Would you really like me to? Because I do know a different tune. I mean that new Lipton tea jingle. Like lots of folks, I've been hearing it on the radio this week, and, well, I'd kind of like to sing it myself. So, won't you help me out there on the organ, please? Sing a song of Lipton's Lipton T-E-A. 
Always brisk in flavor, B-R-I-S-K. Never wishy-washy, no, no, no siree. So sing a song of Lipton's and buy Lipton tea. Very, very good, Mary. Why, that's the first time I've felt like tapping my foot since I... Turned up my toes. <laughs> well, well, folks, I don't sing too well. But you'll admit that the song has a real catchy tune. And you know, I like the part that goes, uh, Always brisk in flavor, B-R-I-S-K. But goodness, most of us have known for a long time that Lipton's has a brisk flavor. So folks, listen for the song on your radio and see if you can't sing it better than I do. Well, now let's get back to that cabin. See how Joe and Nancy are getting along with their uninvited visitor, a corpse in their cabin. Yes, it's one of those times when two's company and three's a shroud. <laughs> I wonder what they're going to do with her, don't you? <laughs> now, Nancy, we have to take this over. We're in a jam. Oh, for the love of Pete, Nancy, this is no time to faint. Oh, darling, it's awful. Her face shot away. Oh, don't look at her. Here, here, sit down. <laughs> Joe, what do we do? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I have to think. Oh, on my wedding night to have a thing like this happen. Why did he leave her here? To put us in a spot. The cops will never believe our story. Now they'll think we killed her. We? But Joe, we never saw her before in our lives. Nancy, we've got to get rid of her. What? Sure, we've got to take her back. Back to the bridge and dump her right back on the murderer. Oh, no, no. It's the only thing we can do. Suppose the cops come here and find her. They'll grill us for hours. They'll hold us for the inquest. It might take a week, two weeks. A fine way to spend a honeymoon in jail. Oh, I never thought of that. Sure, we've got to do it. We've got to take her back. But that means we have to lift her up and carry her. I'll carry her, baby. You, but you'll have to help. Oh, no, I could You've got to, honey. What must I do? Now, look. You go out and get the back door of the car open, and I'll bring her out. Joe. Joe, they'll find us here with the body. Quick. Throw the blanket over her. I'll see who it is. Oh, I can't go near her. Do what I say. Quick. I'll try. Give me a minute. Uh, uh, who is it? It's I, Mrs. Swenson. Yes, Mrs. Swenson. Have you got her covered up? The blanket. It's too short. Uh, just a minute, Mrs. Swenson. Her feet are sticking out. Get those clothes out of the valise. Throw them on top of her. That's the best I can do. All right, sit on the bed in front of her feet. Hey, hurry, Mr. Hayes. Uh, coming, Mrs. Swenson. Everything okay, Nancy? Yes, but I feel faint. Don't bite your lip. Do anything, but don't faint now. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Swenson. Uh, good evening, Mr. Page. I hope I'm not intruding. I saw your light, so I knew you weren't asleep yet. Oh, uh, well, we were just going to sleep. Uh, what, weren't we, Nancy? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should have thought you'd be asleep long ago. See, I brought you a jug of my own homemade apple cider. I'll put it right here, and, and some glasses, too. Oh, well, thank you, thank you, Mrs. Swenson. That's awfully nice of you. Yeah. Oh, not at all. It's so nice to have a honeymoon couple. I, I wanted to do it earlier, but my heart was bothering me. I have a bad heart, you know. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry to hear that, Mrs. Swenson. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for everything. Well, aren't you going to try my cider? I thought you'd like to drink a toast. Well, we're, we're not very thirsty right now, Mrs. Swenson. Uh, are we? Are we, Nancy? No, no, no. Oh, no. Of course not. Uh, now, I'll run right along and leave you both strictly alone. Yes. Well, well, good night, Mrs. Swenson, and thanks again. Good night, Mrs. Swenson. Oh, you poor dear. You look all tuckered out sitting there on the bed. I bet you don't even know how to make up a bed. Here, I'll make it up for you. Oh, no, no. Well, it's the least I can do. Now, now, you just sit over oh, here no. on the chair. No, just... please don't. Oh, why? Well, she means, she means, please don't bother. Well, it's no bother at all. Oh, now, look at all those clothes all thrown around. Oh! What? What's this? We, we can explain everything, Mrs. Swenson. Shot! She's been shot in the face! Murder! Oh, no, please, oh. Mrs. Swenson, it's not what you mean. Murder! Murder! No, no. You're, you're no honeymoon. No. You're murdering! No, we... Please, please, Stop please. that! Let me go! Let me go! Shut up! Let me go! Stop that! Mrs. Swenson. 
Mrs. Swenson, are you all right? Mrs. Joe. What, what is it? I'm a murderer. Me. Joe Page, a killer. We started out on a honeymoon, and now... Now I'm a murderer. <laughs> I'm a murderer, isn't that a laugh? Joe! Oh, I, I... I was kind of dizzy for a second. Joe, please. Please, darling. You look like a ghost. You're trembling. Nancy, what are we going to do? Are, are, are you sure she's dead? Yeah, yeah. Look at her face. Sure she's dead. And that one on the bed. We're in a jam, Nancy. In a jam. <laughs> Darling, I, I wish I were dead, too. Don't hold us for murder, Nancy. But it was an accident. You didn't mean to kill Mr. Swenson. Yeah, but how will we ever prove we didn't kill the other one, too? We'll never be able to find that guy with the black road, so the cops will pin the rap on us. Don't take me out of here. I can't stand it. Her on the bed. Mrs. Swenson on the floor. Oh, let's go way far away. You mean run away? Yes. Anything, but let's not stay here. I won't go to jail. I won't. Take me away. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, we'll get out. We'll, we'll keep going. Nobody knows our names. They can't trace us. No. Come on. Get the clothes packed. Joe. I can't close this valise. I'll close it. You get the other one packed. And don't forget anything. Look under the bed. Yeah. Be sure we don't leave a single thing behind. No, no we mustn't, mustn't leave anything behind me. I wish I could sleep for a hundred years. My 
Poor Joe. Here, put your head on my shoulder. First night of our honeymoon. And maybe the last. Sure did. 
We didn't recover the body of the girl. It was carried downstream. It may take several days to find it. Then, then we're not wanted for anything? Well, your other folks were in Mrs. Swenson's cabin last night. We figure you left in a hurry. Kind of embarrassing to have a thing like that happen on your honeymoon, huh? Can't blame you. Oh, uh, we're free to go on our honeymoon? Just come down to the barracks and sign a statement, and then you can be on your way. Uh, uh, would you mind, officer, just a few minutes? We want to go back in the diner for our honeymoon breakfast. <laughs> I was hoping Joe and Nancy would end up in a cell with a warden asking them what they wanted for their last meal. What do I get instead? A wedding breakfast. Ah, the crowd down at the morgue are going to laugh at me for this. It won't be their last laugh either. No, they had that already. <laughs> yes, I have a feeling that somebody's been tampering with tonight's story. Was it you, Mary Bennett? What? Why, that's plain silly. How can you suspect me of changing the story? Yes, I guess not. Otherwise, when our little couple was so scared, they would have tried whistling in the dark. Whistling? Yes, mm. whistling that new Lipton tea jingle. Mary? <laughs> well, let me tell you that lots of people will be whistling and singing that Lipton jingle, and real soon, too, because it's got the kind of tune that everybody likes. Just the way they like Lipton tea. So keep your ears open for that Lipton jingle, won't you? And remember, you just don't know how good tea can be till you know how good Lipton's is. So sing a song of Lipton's and buy Lipton tea. And now a parting word of advice, friends. Our solution for eliminating crime. The perfect way to prevent any murderer from committing murder is to commit the murderer before he commits the murder. <laughs> oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery novel is The Whistling Leg by Roman McDougall. Yes, the next week's Inner Sanctum story, directed by Hyman Brown, and brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. Next week's story is so scary, it's going to freeze the airways. It's about a man who's dead, but he doesn't know it. And you know, there's only one man who can get away with that. His name? Why, of course, it's Boris Karloff. That's right. Boris Karloff will appear on Inner Sanctum next Tuesday night. So, if you're planning to drop dead... Wait till Tuesday. We can use the publicity. <laughs> and now it's time to close the squeaking door, so good night. Pleasant dreams.